These are brand new U.S. passports coming off the assembly line. They might look like small, ordinary booklets, but they're actually one of the most sophisticated security devices manufactured in the world. Each one is a masterpiece of design and technology, purpose-built to do two things, make travel seamless for you and stop criminals in their tracks. Falsified passports are used in everything from identity theft to human and contraband trafficking to financial crimes. So how has this humble little device become one of the most sophisticated weapons in the war against organized crime? Start with the blank pages you're looking at. They're not paper. Next generation passports like these first came off the assembly lines at the US government publishing office in 2021. The sheets are plastic polycarbonate. The security process starts with these. Sheets of polycarbonate are most often manufactured by mixing a substance called bisphenol A with sodium hydroxide. These two ingredients are put in a solution of diphenyl carbonate and then get treated with an organic solvent. Ethanol is then typically added to make the finished solid polymer. But there's something else in there. Look more closely and you'd see that these new US passports have tiny fibers in them that resemble hairs. They're peculiar enough that the State Department saw the need to address it on its website as a frequently asked question. My passport has fibers in the paper that look like tiny hairs. Is that okay? The answer, yes. Those fibers are part of the document. They're one of the subtle ways that your passport is a mobile fraud prevention tool because they're challenging for counterfeiters to replicate. They're called orbit fibers and they're randomly distributed into the material of the polycarbonate. This occurs during the manufacturing process for the material itself. The fibers get embedded before the sheets are finished. As a result, no two pages of a passport will be the same. But that's only the first step. You won't be carrying around huge sheets of polycarbonate and that's why things are about to get hot. These sheets now need to be shaped in the appropriate dimensions. A proper US passport is precisely 5 inches wide by 3.5 inches tall. But cutting the material down to that size comes through a pretty hardcore process called thermoforming. Temperatures can reach all the way up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the passports are in the proper size, multiple layers of polycarbonate are fused by lamination. But that's not as easy as it sounds. Typical thermal lamination temperatures range between 250 and 275 degrees. A lot of the security features, like this hologram that's shimmering under light, are attached to one of the inner layers at this time. After the heat treatment, the publishing office needs more lines of defense, because the fibers aren't enough. Look at this ink. It gets added via the process of offset printing, printing that uses metal plates covered in ink to transfer images onto sheets. But this ink is special. You may have noticed that some of the ink on a passport page changes color when you look at it under different lighting conditions or at different angles. And so far, we've only talked about the things you can actually see. One thing you can't see is infrared and ultraviolet light, but the instruments that customs officials use can see them. When this ink is put under UV or infrared light, it begins to glow in different patterns like you see here. Since these inks are very hard for fraudsters to get their hands on, inspecting the ink is a good way for a customs officer to check if the document is authentic. And these raw materials are just the beginning. US passports have an interior that uses a special font called OCRB, a monospace font developed by the American type founders in the 1960s. The foreground features fraud-resistant features like little bleeds and bumps. These imperfections are challenging for forgers to duplicate authentically, but the real action is in the background, literally. Just like their counterparts at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, the people at the US publishing office use micro-printed words to add another layer of security. You probably won't notice these words on your passport because you wouldn't be able to read them without a magnifying glass. Such small lettering is almost impossible to duplicate because forgers normally don't have access to machinery that can print words in such small, fine detail. The same principle is at work when it comes to protecting the US money supply. But the text gets even smaller. Forget about microprinting. There are nanoprinted texts on all US passports. These letters are small, like smaller than one of your body's individual cells. Only a microscope can read them. 
and they're virtually impossible to counterfeit. These are impressive enough features to stop counterfeiters, but the federal government doesn't stop there. You don't just see a passport, you feel one, and that gives the publishing office another opportunity to stop wannabe forgers. Just like the money supply, US passports use intaglio printing to improve security, and that means certain parts of a passport or passport card will be raised in relief print that you can easily feel. This is particularly true on US passport cards, which have textured dates of birth and equivalence values, the letter and numbers below the portrait. The letters USA to the right are also something you should be able to easily feel on a legitimate US passport card, as is the great seal of the United States, which intersects with the upper left of the portrait. Every passport goes through the same origin process, but each one gets a unique treatment just before it's ready to make its debut. Look at your passport and you'll see yourself along with other information like your birthday, place of birth, the document serial number, and so on. All of this information gets engraved into the finished passport with a laser, and it's surprisingly durable. Polychromatic images like this one can be produced on polycarbonate in full color at temperatures ranging from negative 4 degrees to 176 degrees. The records that the laser engraves onto a passport come during the application process, where people submit unobstructed photos and their personal identifying information, like birth dates and place of residence. But the words and numbers on your passport aren't the end of the story. This information on a passport is stored in another place, all in the same document. You're looking at a Radio Frequency Identification RFID chip. It's small, no more than 10 centimeters. Chips like this are embedded into the second page of a US passport, usually at the bottom near the photo. This embedding comes during the lamination process we just discussed. That means they're pretty hardy. Standard RFID chips can survive temperatures up to 356 degrees Fahrenheit, but the most durable can get up to a staggering 600 degrees. These chips are more than fireproof. They're fantastically efficient places to store information. Passive RFID tags, like those found on US passports, will carry 64 kilobytes of data. It doesn't sound like a lot compared to your computer, but it's more than enough to store all of the information customs officials need to make sure you're actually who you say you are, without carrying around sheets of paper in some folder that you might lose. Each chip has a unique number that's associated with a specific record in one of the federal government's secure databases. This biometric and biographic data doesn't actually come on the RFID chip. Rather, customs officials around the world can scan it and then they will be taken to the passport holder's specific record in the State Department's database. There's another funny thing about polycarbonate. Once its layers are fused together, they can't be separated. So none of these embedded security features can be changed or the entire document would be destroyed. How successful have these security integrations been? You can find the proof with the State Department, which carefully tracks every known case of passport fraud. There are dozens listed on the website in 2024 alone, but none of these involved a fraudulent passport that someone attempted to make from scratch. Instead, most of the cases involve people applying for a passport through official channels, but under false or stolen identities. So the folks at the publishing office have done a good job in defeating counterfeiters. But there's one challenge remaining for the publishing office, and if it can't be completed, all of the sophisticated anti-fraud features that already exist would go to waste. Some of these boxes contain completed US passports. Each one is given a unique tracking number that applicants can monitor via the US Postal Service, which makes the delivery. The State Department is also in constant communication with each passport applicant, letting them know about their document status through frequent email updates. As of April 2024, routine processing times are listed on the State Department website as between 6 and 8 weeks. If things go beyond that, you might want to check in. The State Department also informs customers that they must report a lost or stolen passport right away and makes it easy for them to do so on official government websites and phone lines. Customer involvement reduces the chance of funny business. Hey, you paid for your passport after all. You have a stake in making sure that you get it, not least of which is because you don't want your identity stolen. Thankfully, when you get your passport in the mail and see how your personal information is integrated with the art on those sheets of special plastic, 
you'll have good reasons to be confident that you won't be a victim of fraud, at least as far as travel documents go. It's been a long journey, but the US government can't rest easy. The race against bad actors never ends. So what's next? Maybe it's not so much what as who, as in you. This is Dubai International Airport, the busiest in the world by international passenger traffic. But there's something peculiar about this place. Passengers here don't need to present customs officials with their passports. Instead, they just need to look at a special camera. The airport installed these cameras during the pandemic to minimize contact. The cameras scan arrivals' faces and irises with other identifying data, like the information stored on a passport. The US government hasn't implemented iris scanning on a passport yet, but CBP already uses the technology elsewhere. Similarly, the Department of Homeland Security already uses fingerprint scanning at all major ports of entry. Other countries have been on the act for a long time. Japan started collecting fingerprints from international visitors since 2007. Two years later, the European Union started to build a 10-fingerprint visa issuance program. It might only be a matter of time before your eyes and fingers become your passport. They're even harder for counterfeiters to duplicate, after all. Bye for now.